Hey folks, it's Frithgar here, how you doing? Welcome back to Farming Simulator 22. I'm keeping the area that I'm doing the leveling bit on small. I don't want to spend too much money on this. So there, it's lowering it down just on the side but there in front of us it's already starting to bring it up so i don't need to do any more on that i don't want to change that any further so now we can go to the smoothing function and this one i do want to make a little bit bigger and now i can smooth and blend this in and that's going to go there that's going to cost us another thousand or two just blending this down but we need to do it because we've also got to do a bit of painting here to sort of bring that in around and and we'll lower that down we don't want too steep a bank on this side and then we come up here around our little bit of track that we've got on this side and there's not a lot that we need to do here either okay i think that's probably about right so then we can go into our painting. We've got dirt over this way. We want to change that one over to a circle and make that a little bit bigger. And that dirt is going to come in. It's a little bit of concrete around there. That's fine. That can stay as concrete. That's going to come out like that. It's just going to kind of come up like this. There. Yeah because of the angle it kind of looks a little bit odd that's fine we can we can have it like that and then that comes out that way and this is going to come up here i'll keep going with the painting so this bit over here what we're actually going to want is that's going to come up around there like that and that one's going to come up around there like that as well there and we'll also do it going out that way all right that's looking odd now i'll just do it wider it always ends up looking a little bit peculiar doesn't it really see it never seems to matter quite how you do it it always ends up looking a little bit odd let's go to plants then and this is the problem here is plants for us cost an absolute fortune and this is why i so badly want to be able to finish this so we'll just put a few spots in i so badly want to be able to finish this by episode 75 because then i will be able to have free landscaping in the next series and the free landscaping and free fences is going to make a huge difference to everything that's all i'm going to do we'll leave it at that we now have a silo silo is built we can now go and store our grain in here when we start our harvest in another couple of days so let's go over and sleep the night again we've done everything that we want to do today let's sleep that's going to get us a little bit more wool more stuff from the greenhouses yada 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 Bit of early morning summer rain. No issues up here. Water's being used up a bit. We've got uh, six litres of hay left in the bales. Nothing else to report, really. The wool is at 530, 594 litres of wool on each pallet. And the greenhouse is down here. I'm not actually going to do anything today, I don't think greenhouses if we go and have a look at these we've got plenty of water in here three pallets of tomatoes six excuse me six pallets of strawberries uh prices for strawberries and tomatoes right now uh how are we doing the prices actually well last year they rose a little bit for there and also they did in july for there well, at the moment we're on 236 and 465 so close to the bottom as far as prices are concerned for the greenhouse produce but nothing much that we need to worry about we will now go and sleep the night again and before we start on the harvest work i think we will take everything from 
the greenhouses and the sheep and so on. And we'll run that down into town. We can also take the wrapper. We'll be able to sell the wrapper. We'll be able to sell the greenhouse produce and we will be able to put the wool into the mill so that that can be used to start making you know we can get more fabric from it so we're on 8843 euros we have 835 liters per pallet the food and water situation is absolutely fine for the sheep like we've hardly got any sheep so we would hope that the food and water situation would be fine 522 it's gone up a bit that has and here 261 that's also gone up a bit so that's quite nice i mean it, it is currently dropping down a bit so i'm actually going to just slow that down we're going to go to one time speed now and the weather forecast for today is dry until late this afternoon that again is absolutely fine and over here we've got 10 liters of honey honey really didn't take off on this map we didn't have the money for it I'm kind of thinking I will go for bees in a bigger way in the next one because I'm going to be trying to avoid greenhouses as much as I can. And if I'm going to be avoiding greenhouses, I'm going to need to be making up my money somehow. And I think that um, bees and chickens will be the way that we start off by making money if I'm not doing greenhouse work. I'll see. I'll see. Um... I'm, I'm torn on that one. I'm not quite sure how I'm going to play that one out. Uh, I will will have to see. Right, what have I got this... Uh, no, I'm on Euro pallets. That's okay. So we can load those up and get these next two. How many have I got in the strawberry greenhouse? Materials missing for wool. Still costing us per month. Uh, this one, 725. I got one pallet that we'll need to wait for. Load those up. Let's just wait for that one pallet to come out. And then, actually, if I move forward a little tiny bit. There it is. There's those two. And then we've got four more pallets. One, two, three, four. Right. I go up and I get the wool. So we drive around this way. We go and get the wool from the sheep and then we come back over this way and we get the wrapper hooked onto the back and then we drive down into town. We sell this little lot here. We transport the wool to the spinnery and have that starting to process in the spinnery to make more fabric. And then we come back up the mountain and we jump onto our combine and we can start our harvest. At least that's the plan. So we'll load up that one there. 906 litres of wool. Down here. So we're not quite 2,000 litres of wool this time. But that's fine. There, we've now got 1,741 litres of wool. Just need to... We haven't actually tested out this by driving on it yet. But that seems reasonably level going through there. See any problems with that? That seems pretty good. And out that side as well. So we've got no issues there. The only thing that we're going to want... Uh, we will be baling up the straw as well and we'll be using that straw so i'm curious how much is straw selling for today let's have a look 38 and 34 it will go up as high as 49 it hardly seems worth waiting for but honestly that hardly seems worth waiting for i'll see what i sort of Basically, I'll just see what I feel like, really, with that. Oh, there was a level area. We were supposed to make a level area for loading the silage as well. There's one other little bit that we need to do. So there's going to be another little bit of money that we're going to have to fork out. Because it's not only loading the silage, but it'll be loading the straw as well. 
The problem with the straw is that we've got nowhere to store it. We don't have a shed to put the straw in. Now, we could keep it outside, but that does tend to... You can store round bales outside without too much trouble, right? It's, it's not going to be an issue storing them outside. It's not going to be any kind of problem whatsoever. But what it does do is it damages the outside inch or two of straw. And so then you get less of... A premium for it which means that if we store it until winter we'd essentially be offered in real life about what we would expect to get for the straw at this time of year so I think if we're playing hardcore the idea is that we try to emulate real life as closely as possible by using you know magic auto load trailers and things like that um, we because we don't have anywhere to store our straw we would be looking at selling it off the field because if we sold it off the field now or we moved it stored it and then sold it in the winter um because we can't store the stuff in a enclosed because we don't have a barn to store it we wouldn't leave it just lying in the middle of the field we would at least move it off the edges of the field so we're handling it then we've got to handle it again in order to load it up and move it to sell it as there's extra money that we're spending out in order to do that. Plus we get a decreased value of the straw because the outside inch or two has been spoiled because of the weather. Which means that we'd essentially end up with about the same as if we sell it right now. So I think for the straw, looking at it in a realistic fashion, we want to sell the straw now. That's, um, it, it kind of makes sense. We don't have a shed to store it in. Now, if we had a shed to store it in, that would be a different matter. It would be, be completely different if we had a shed to store it in. But we don't, so we, we're not going to worry about that. Right, let's unhitch that one right there. And we will sell that one. Because we have decided that we're not going to do silage anymore. So we get 18,187. I spend four here on that, and that gets me an extra euro back. So 1,048 on there, yes. We get about an extra 130 euros coming back on the paint job there. So if I sell that now, I get 19,300. Yes, okay. And we're up to 27,000 euros. That's pretty good. We're not going to get a vast sum of money for the strawberries and the tomatoes. We're not expecting a vast sum, sum of money for it, but we're going to get some. We're going to get a reasonable. We're going to get a reasonable amount of money for it. And once we've done the harvest, the combine will be able to sell that one almost straight away. Actually, we will. There's no reason that we need to keep the combine after that. So. We've got another thirty or 40,000 coming in for the combine. That's going to go in there like that. Now, that's not getting us any money, but we have one pallet of fabric right there already. And if we go here, it's two for one. We'll have two pallets of fabric. I'm not sure what the ratio is for fabric into cloth because you don't see what that is prior to doing your construction work. So we need to take this background. Uh, I, I mean, because we're going to be waiting until winter in order to sell the silage bales, we will have a bit more production time for wool, which means that we'll have a bit more that we can bring down. Plus, we're going to have a bit more stuff coming in for the greenhouses as well. Uh, you know, from the greenhouses, bringing it down here and selling it. Um, we will have already sold the straw bales and we will have already sold the combine. So, overall, I think we're going to be able to do this in a realistic fashion. Like, we've decided that we're not doing arable crops anymore. And if the next farmer does want to do arable crops, they'll bring their own combine or they'll buy one. So, that's obviously entirely up to them how they want to do things. And it's not really our concern whether or not we leave them a combine when we sell the farm. It's not down to us to sell them their machinery. Right, that's everything gone. 2,481 for selling that lot. We now have 29,618. So I'm just going to take those off. And I'm curious if there is any other tailors 
Uh, is there a cheaper tailor? We've got factory right there. So that's the bakery. Green mill. mill. Tailor shop. It doesn't tell us how many we need for that tailor shop. It just says 100,000. Do I have any mods that allow us a cheaper tailoring option? That's what I'd like. If they've got a cheaper tailoring option, that would be quite cool, wouldn't it? You know, because it's only a small tailor that we want to build. We don't necessarily need to build a massive great big tailor. That's all of the um, biogas plant. Uh, all of the different modules of it, so you can build one however you like. It is a multi-production factory right there. I don't want that. These are sawmills, seed production, sugar beet, TMR. No. Well, that's disappointing. So I, I do need the 100,000 to be able to get the base game machine, the base game factory. I've, I've got no other options. We need the base game one. Which means we have to get that 100,000. As soon as we reach the 100,000, it's actually going to be a bit more than that. We've got to remember that because we've got to be able to build the thing. And we've got to find somewhere to put it. Which means that we're going to need somewhere slightly... Now, I had right away there. That van was pushing in, but I had right away. I was already on the roundabout and coming round. He had to give way to me. So that was entirely him not paying attention when he slammed his brakes on. That was not me breaking traffic laws. For once, <laughs> the incident on the road wasn't actually my fault. I feel quite proud of that. I, I feel like, you know, I, I, I suddenly I feel like I'm growing as a person because the, the, the road traffic incident wasn't actually my fault. I feel that my optic illumination is going to be very pleased with me on that one. I feel that he's, he's going to be impressed. He's he's He calls me out for all of these um, various traffic offences that I commit. That, I did not commit a traffic offence. I carried on driving. I was, it was, the, the van was the one at fault, not me. Decided to try switchbacking my way up the hill this time. I did, I was saying originally, you know, we were going to build a track up through here and everything. We never actually got round to that, did we? But yeah, I thought I'd try switchbacking and seeing if it was any quicker. I'm driving, you know, the wheels are turning faster. It's definitely helping that way, but I'm not entirely sure that I'm getting up the hill any quicker than if I was just going straight up and crawl. At least I feel like I'm, I feel like I'm making some progress, though. So um, I'm, I'm reasonably happy with that. I'm reasonably happy with the, the way that I managed to progress up the hill, but I, I'm not sure it was actually any faster than doing it the other way. I really don't. Okay. Um, this is the only trailer we've got. But what we do have is the mod that allows us to repair and work on our machinery like this. So we go up to it and I think we press N. Yeah, we press N. So I've got the Valtra right there. Now I need to repair that one. We need to do some work. I probably should have done this yesterday. But that one has now been worked on. And I'm going to repair the front weight as well. And we're also going to repair the trailer. Yes, I'm not repainting any of them. But I'm also going to customise this trailer. We now need to customise. And it's going to cost me a lot of money to be able to... It's 2,000 euro. I'm going to go for an 8,000 litre capacity. Because I think that'll fit quite nicely with everything else that we're doing. Um, I've got a 4,000 litre there. I think it would actually be better to have the 8,000 customize that cost me 2,000 euros to do that uh, let's jump in hitch that one on right I now have a trailer and as soon as we have the first bit of grain go into here I will buy the chickens and the chickens will put the grain into the hen house I really should have a track coming up here, except I'm very well aware of how much quite a few of you don't like seeing too much um, landscaping. So I'm not going to worry about landscaping at this point in this series because I, I haven't really bothered doing loads of landscaping on a lot of the rest of it. So it sort of seems a little point, really. It, it sort of at this stage, it kind of like seems a little bit pointless. Uh, I'm going to bring that one back there. I'm not going to worry about dragging the header all the way up because I don't need to. 
So we'll unhitch that one there. And then I'll drive round here like this. And I'll take that header off the trailer. And then we'll use that and we will get started on our harvest. Now, the harvest itself is going to be the most time-consuming job that we have left to do. It's going to be the challenge is getting this harvest done in time. I'm reasonably confident that we can. It's also going to take a while to get the combine all the way back down to the bottom and I realize I have started like cutting out bits of travel up and down from the town which technically with the hardcore series I'm not supposed to do. And so that's kind of allowing me a little bit more time, such as like when I take the combine back down the bottom again, instead of showing you the full 10 minute journey, um, I'll probably do what I did last time and uh, time lapse it for you, just to have a little bit of a time lapse in there. Um, but again, it's, it is safe, it's actually saving me time. So for me, it's, it's beneficial, but I'm not sure if you think that that could actually be classed as cheating. Easy combine, this is. God, we can do this. Right, we are just going to go on. Oh, wait a minute, there's. There, we need to lift that one up. It's the middle mouse button to do that, actually. And then lift that up and we'll do that as well. Okay, we are now harvesting. So I will follow this round. This is a really noisy combine. I think some of the machinery sounds were a little tiny bit louder since I started. This one's definitely louder. Like that. That feels a little bit deafening to me. I don't know if it's um, excessive for you watching, but that does actually seem quite loud for me. So I'm going to alter it slightly. Instant silence in there. I'm going to make a slight tweak. Vehicle volume right there. I'm going to adjust that down to, say, 30%. That's better. Yeah, that's definitely better. All right, we'll, we'll go with that. Because then it is still, I mean, the Combine's a noisy machine, so I don't want to sort of take that away. But at the same time, I also don't want it to be deafening, so I'm having to bellow over the top of it. I don't really want to do that either. I'm sure my neighbours don't want me to be screaming into the microphone too long. And carry on along here. We'll probably end up doing the whole field and then put in the rake in the fields and raking the straw up into um, bigger windrows. Oh, I'm, I'm not sure at the moment. I'll sort of see, I'll see how we go. We may end up not needing to do that. Although our baler is quite slow, isn't it? Our bail, well actually it's not too bad. It may not be the fastest baler on two wheels, four wheels, any wheels. But, I don't know, it's, it's not too bad, so... But still, this, this isn't a very wide cut on this, so I reckon that if we would have put the... Maybe if we, if we do the outside rounds and we bail up the outside rounds and then we could put the rake on the other tractor and rake the land work, because I'll sort of do two, um, two, maybe three rounds, I should think, of the combine, and then we can sort of deal with the rest. So I'm almost at one full tank already. Two and a half thousand litres for a tank. And what I will do is, as soon as we've unloaded the first tank from the combine, I'm going to fill it all the way up. As soon as we've unloaded the first tank from the combine, we will then go take that straight down and tip it in for chickens. And then we will buy chickens. We'll probably... I'm thinking that we'll just fill the chicken pen up. Or at least get as many as we can. Because then we're instantly going to be getting eggs. Like that the egg, the eggs are going to be coming in straight away. And we'll be able to start transporting them down the mountain to sell them. 
The only issue we're going to have is if we find out after a while that, well, actually, we can't do quite what we wanted to do because um, all of the chickens that we've gone and bought are eating the wheat a lot faster than we originally anticipated. Although I'm thinking that considering that we now have two and a half thousand litres of wheat and I haven't even gone around the field once, we will probably have enough to last us a fair while. So I'll put that one out like that. There. And then I go and get this one. I will chase round this way. See? That tractor feels unusually quiet now. The combine is definitely... It's just the combine is definitely loud. We might... I think we'll change this back. This, this is a little bit too quiet, I think. I, I don't like this. I like to be able to hear the machinery. Because the, the sounds the machinery make are brilliant in this game. It's just that that combine is just a little bit too over the top with the, the, the noise. Maybe when we've done the outside rounds and we go back to doing... Uh, we go to doing the, the land work with it and we're not watching the combine quite so much. Um, we'll do something else. Right. Let's take that. Actually, you know what? I'm going to stop that one there. Change my mind ever so slightly. We will do the three outside rounds first. Let's just start you up again. Once I've done the three outside rounds, then I will go and buy the chickens and, and do the stuff that I said that I was going to do. Because uh, that way, while we're buying chickens and so on, the combine will still be working. We'll have hired help that will be doing that job. So let's bring you on up this way. Like that. A little bit higher. And... and that and there we go so we're in the shade on our little platform but there is our bison combine I got my shades on as well I think that looks pretty swish I do not gonna lie I think that does look pretty good especially the way he changes gear like that that's looking pretty awesome I'm liking this. I am liking this a lot. Fantastic. Look at him go. I'm already on 700 litres. Just going up the hill there. Right, we've got quite a bit of grain in this field. I think we are going to easily have enough to keep our chickens occupied for a while. I mean, it does depend how many... I can't remember how many chickens we can put in that thing. Could end up with... Also, we, we'll we be fine for the chickens. We, we will be fine. We'll, we'll have plenty to feed them and so on. And then the next person. Unfortunately, folks, that is all we have got time for today. A massive thank you to everybody who has earned their way into the Great Book of Names. To find out some more details about all the names coming past, please head into the description and click on the link to the Discord. It's a link to another video. The link is on the other video. Uh, please also consider checking out the links there for Nitrado, who provide gaming servers for games like Farming Simulator, Minecraft, Ark, and several others. And there's also Fanatical, who will help support your gaming habit by providing you with cheap games and also giving me a small commission on anything that you buy using my link. Uh, if you've enjoyed this particular video, then please head down below and give us a like. And if you really enjoyed it, then please tell your friends all about me. Get them to come and watch as well. That would be awesome. And until next time, thank you very much for watching. This is Frithgar. Goodbye, and see you later.